All right, so we were talking about how light rays bend. When the uh, light goes from, say, water into air, the uh, part of the light ray that hits the air first is going to speed up, which would cause it to bend. Or it could be the other way around. If it hits water, the part that hits the water first will slow down, which will also cause the light ray to bend. And because of that different speed and the bending of the light rays, uh, objects that are underwater uh, may look distorted or may not be in the right place. They look like they're, they may appear to be in a certain location, they're actually in a different location. Okay. Uh, there are some other things that can cause that. For example, um, how thin or thick the atmosphere is can affect uh, how fast the light travels through it. Okay. And so if we look at the sun sending uh, light rays uh, to the earth, as the light rays come in, okay, they're coming in, and let's just think of them as a line again. Say so there's a line of light rays coming in here. Uh, they are going to hit the atmosphere here first, and that is going to slow them down, not a lot, but a little bit, and cause them to bend. So instead of coming in a straight line, they're going to bend slightly and come down to our eye. Now, the so to us, if we look, it looks like the sun's right over here about to go down the horizon. But actually, we sometimes get sunlight where the sun is actually below the horizon because when the light comes in, it hits the different atmosphere here. As it comes in, it's getting thicker and thicker here, so it's going slower and slower, and that causes the uh, light rays, instead of just continuing to go off, they begin to bend and come down, and they turn their direction to where they're coming straight to our eyes here. And so we're actually seeing a few extra moments of sunlight because of the way it bends at the horizon. Now, because it's thinner at the top than at the bottom, the bottom rays get bent more than the top rays, and sometimes this will cause the uh, sun to look uh, even more distorted. Rather than just being large, which it will be sometimes, it looks much larger at the bottom than it does top and at the top. And so you end up with these flattened images of the sun. Okay, And so you have this illusion of the sun being flat instead of round, which is, of course, not true. It's just because the light of it is being bent differently. Uh, it doesn't get as bent as much in the thinner atmosphere, the top part that we're seeing, as much as it does when it passes through the lower part, and so the lower part of it looks more distorted. Now, the same general principle could also apply to um, the desert and the idea of mirages, okay? Uh, in this case, it's not the thinness or thickness of the air, but rather the fact that some of the air is hotter. As the air heats, as the ground heats up during the day, it has a, a low specific heat, so it heats up very quickly, and it heats the air up, and the air is much hotter near there. So a light ray that's passing through here will begin to bend because the hotter will, um, hotter air is at the bottom. It will start to move faster, and this top part will move slower, and so it will tilt up and come up like this. And so the light that we're actually seeing is light that was coming from, say, the palm tree here, then it turns because of the hotter air down here and the cooler air up here, and it turns, and we see it. And so it's almost like a reflection, because to us, this ray that comes to our eyes looks like it was coming in a straight line from here, kind of like the mirror image of the palm tree. Okay, And so you might see the image of the upside-down palm tree, or you might, if it's really distorted, you just see kind of a hazy, silvery distortion thing. Uh, the same thing's true if you're looking down the highway, and you just see a bunch of wavy, uh, the, you see things, but they start looking kind of wavy. Well, that's because the distortions of the light uh, passing through that hot air over the asphalt, especially in the middle of the summer, that will happen. Okay, and an example of that, uh, here are some highway patrolmen or motorcyclists at any rate, uh, going down the road. And because the light from there is it's hitting the air right above the hot, it's bending back up, and we see almost reflection. You can kind of see their helmets there. Uh, and this one, you can't see the helmet, but you can see the headlight. Okay, this one, the headlight, not so much, and the, kind of the body of the, the uh, uh, motorcycle. But you can see how, as it gets shimmery there, it could very much look like water, particularly if you're out in the desert and we're very, very thirsty. And so that's where you get that idea of the mirage. It's the way the light bends as it's going through the warm air near the ground, and it causes the top part of the light ray to slow down because it's cooler. The bottom part speeds up, and that causes it to turn back up toward our eyes. And so we see that reflection, shimmery type thing that would look like a mirage. Next thing I'd like to talk about, of, about light, uh, the idea of light and color. Technically, we see light. Light rays come into our eyeball. But 
Color is how our nerve and brain interprets that light. Those light rays that hit are interpreted by um, our nerve system and the retina at the back of our eye and into our brain. And so uh, sometimes people may see different colors depending on how their brain interprets the information that they get or how it's received on the retina. Uh, for example, people who are colorblind are actually their brain interprets it as a different color. But technically, the same light rays are coming into a colorblind person's eye as anyone else's. So light is what we see. Color is how our brain and our eyeball, our retina, and so forth interpret that light. Okay. And basically, uh, if you put all the colors of light together, okay, when we tend to think about mixing colors, we tend to be thinking about pigments, which are things that absorb uh, color. But if you put all colors of light, and basically we have three, we'll talk about in a minute, red, blue, and green. And if you put those together where they overlap, or all three of them overlap, you would have white. Okay, White is all the colors of light put together. Black is kind of like cold. We said cold was just when there wasn't any heat. Okay, well the same thing as black is if there's no light. So if there's no light present, uh, then what we see is black. And when we look at an object, Basically, it depends on, it's not that that object is a certain color, it's that that object either absorbs certain colors and it reflects certain colors. If it reflects all the colors back, like this white screen, then we say, oh, it's white because it's reflecting all the colors. It's not absorbing any of it. It's reflecting all of it back to my eye and I see it as white. On the other hand, parts of the screen that are black, here, here, and here, are those part of the screen are absorbing all the colors, and therefore I see it as black. Okay. If I see something as red, then that means it's absorbing all the colors except for red, and it's reflecting or sending red light to my eye. If it's blue, then it's reflecting blue light to my eye. And if it's reflecting green, then it's reflecting green light. Um, for example, plants feel so, oh, they need green light. Well, no, actually, green is the color they reflect. So most plants don't use green wavelengths of light. It's the other wavelengths of light, the blue and the red, that they actually use to make photosynthesis. Okay, it's the colors that they absorb that are useful to them. If you grew them under a green light and all they got were green wavelengths of light, they would not do very well. All right. Now, uh, these three primary colors of light, once again, light, not pigment or dyes, okay, but if you have these three basic colors of light, red, green, and blue, you may see this on your, it's called RGB, you may see on TV screens or your computer monitor, there are settings that are called the RGB settings, well, that has to do with setting up your uh, red, green, and blue, how much of each of those colors is reflected, okay, uh, also the cones in our eyes, we have little cells called cones, and they are sensitive to each of these colors, now, if one of those are messed up, for example, say the one that receives red or green, then we may see colors differently than other people. And this is what happens with red-green colorblind people. Their receptors for one of these colors, usually red or green, um, is messed up. And so that messes up the way they see the colors because all colors of light are some combination of red, green, and blue. For example, this is an RGB color. Now they have given us a color swatch and they want us to mix these colors of red, green, and blue to match that. Uh, just to show a few things, okay, this goes up to 255. So if I were to take this one, I clear it, and I make it 255 maximum amount of blue, okay, and I take this one, you see how it makes it a lot bluer, okay, I make it 255 for green, except for opening it a little bit there, let me try it again, 255, okay. And then we say, you can see it once again, okay, that changed it to a different color. And then if I do 255, all right, let me try that again, clear, I keep forgetting to do that, okay, 255, and we enter that, the resulting color is white, okay? Now, notice that if I change each of these to 200, all right, and I change this one to 200, all right, I'll try that again. Clear, and then go 200 there, okay? And if I click here and clear and go 200, just having the same amount of green 
uh, green, blue, and yet red does not give me white. But if I have the maximum amount of all those colors mixed together, it will make white. If I set these all to zero, then it would be black. Now, the purpose of this, if you were to do a game, is try to match this color here. Okay? And so, um, I'm going to just try that, clear that as zero, and put uh, no green. Okay? Zero. Okay? And so what that does, see, and that gives us this color. Okay, which is basically magenta. Okay, but it's not the same color as that. So to find that, I would have to either alter my blue or my thing until I get to that color. And by changing the colors, then that can affect what I see it at. Now let's just say, for example, if I'm colorblind, my eye probably sees um, green, but it doesn't pick up the full amount of green. So let's just say I pick up uh, 80. All right, and I clear. Oh, enter, sorry. Um, click 80. Sorry, try again. Clear 80. Okay. And it never gets any higher than that. Okay. Then, um, let's say I was supposed to see something that was 200. I would see this color. And I would be supposed to be seeing this color, which is much different. Okay. Notice that because the green color is missing, Guess what? I see a totally different color, completely gray. Okay, kind of a grayish color, I think. Being colorblind, I couldn't say for sure, but something like that. Okay, so let's try something else. Let's get all, take out one of these colors. In this example, we've completely gotten rid of red, and we all have 100% have green and 100% blue, and we get this color, which is called cyan. And that is if there's no red, then you would expect to see cyan colored. Okay, now let's try to switch a different one. Okay, in this example, we have gotten rid of green. So all we have is red and blue. When you put red and blue together, you get what we call magenta, which is kind of a purplish color. And notice that's almost a perfect match for my swatch. Watch, it's 98.69%. So I have magenta there. That's almost 100% match there. Now if I fiddled with that a little bit, either I went down a little bit on red or a little down on blue, I could probably get that to be 100%. Okay, let's try one more. See, in our last combination, we had zero blue. We just have red and green light together. Red and green light together produce yellow. Now, we're used to mixing dyes or pigments that absorb color instead of mixing light, which adds color. But if you mix red and green, uh, red and blue light, uh, red and green lights together, you will get yellow. Okay. Now, we would say then that since basically um, yellow has no blue light, we would say that. Uh, yellow is the opposite of blue because it doesn't have any blue in it, okay? Uh, when we had the magenta, which was red and blue, we would say that's the opposite of green because it doesn't have any green light in it. So it's as ungreen as you can get, if you will, all right? And when we had the cyan or the blue-green, that would be the opposite of red because there is no red light in that color, okay? And so uh, that's what we mean by uh, opposite colors all right now if you add those opposite colors together then you will get white and those are called so they're also called complementary colors because complementary colors are two colors of light that you can add together to get white okay it's just a different way of looking at it but if you add two opposite colors then they become complementary colors because they create white so for example in our example here we have red and green which make yellow its opposite or complementary, which has the opposite of blue. So blue is its complementary color. So if we go to blue, all right, and we clear it and we enter blue in, all right, now it creates white. So we could say that blue and yellow are complementary colors. They are the opposite of each other, but that makes them complementary and they will create white when you add them together. So right here, if we have these three projectors circling, putting a circle of light, a green, red, and blue, where they all overlap, all three of them added together, are complementary colors to each other. R, G, and B are complementary because they add together to make white. Where red and green overlap, you get yellow. Where uh, blue and red overlap, you get magenta. Where blue and green overlap, you get cyan. And so uh, basically there you can see uh, the complementary colors where they all mix together and then what you get when you only have two of those lights overlapping, okay?